a hundred giles and running uh it's a four paper show today we've got the times uh the telegraph the sun and uh why is my shirt so on like i feel like there should be another button there yeah that's better it's a little it was a bit it was a bit too open that show was it i don't know that's fine anyway uh, welcome to the show. It's a four-paper show. Uh, it's going to be The Times, The Sun, uh, The Daily Mail, and The Daily Telegraph. Uh, content warning for The Sun, uh, front page, and a major story today on uh, domestic abuse. So uh, just be aware that we will be uh, covering that, and obviously The Sun's um, less than uh, delicate treatment of uh, that topic. Uh, hey, Sun Kumai, how are you doing? It's really good to see you. Uh I'm, I'm, I, it was what you were doing, other than watching the show yesterday, looked super cool. Right, so, uh, we're going to start with the Times. The Sun will be our second paper today, so, yeah, there is, I will repeat that content warning before I, uh, put the image of the Sun up and before we cover that paper, so, uh, if you want to skip that section of the show, you are, uh, obviously welcome to do so and, uh, you know may wish to do so. Okay, so the Times, front page of the Times, uh, starts with uh, some um, pseudoscience at the top. Eat yourself smart, the best foods for your brain. Uh, the ever-tedious Robert Crampton says he's glad he dodged paternity leave. I haven't actually read that column, so I don't know what he was saying in that. Was it? Uh, it's, it's the, it's the, it's hard work. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, incredible. Okay, rest of the... Fr hey, Dan Jones, 3142, how are you doing? Thank you, I'm, I'm glad uh, I'm glad to see you. I do blame Avanti Trains for many, many things. Um, okay, so that project will be revealed by Halloween. Okay, cool, excited to uh, see more of that. Right, front page. Uh, so we cover the top top line there. Uh, chemist to offer free blood pressure checks in the heart health drive. Hard to dislike that, but again, it's a it's a big slab of government briefing there. The main story is Britain faces airlift deadline, a continuation of yesterday's thing where uh, the government is briefing to um, essentially blame uh, blame Biden for everything and to try and um, get uh, Boris Johnson and the Johnson government off the hook for any issues with the airlift. Uh, thank you, um, Hosso, uh, Hoss00312 uh, for following the channel. Appreciate that. Um, on the right-hand side, Anthony Lloyd, the Times' foreign correspondent who is in Kabul, uh, brings a, you know a, a direct dispatch of um, events at the airport. Uh, the main picture is uh, another bit of uh, military propaganda. We see a lot of this. Uh, yesterday, lots of pictures of uh, soldiers holding babies. This time, a uh, British soldier giving a uh, Afghan boy a fist bump, which I'm sure that child is delighted about. Uh, right, uh, moving into the paper. Inside the paper, Google Guru created site to shame wife in divorce battle. Um, as the third founder of Google and driving force behind several more internet companies, Scott Hassan, 51, rose from a debt-risen university student to gi giant of Silicon Valley, amassing a multi-billion dollar fortune. Right, so we get to, to hear how cool he is before we get to the point where it says, but the code-savvy entrepreneur whose early work helped to create the world's biggest search engine took a misstep before the opening of a bitter divorce trial in California last night. Last uh, night, misstep. Um, earlier this month, his wife, Alison Hun uh 46, found a mysterious website bearing her name and publish, which that published embarrassing stories from her past. It was basically intended to shame and scare me by interpreting me and trying to turn the world against me. I was distraught, she told the New York Post. Remember, the New York Post is owned uh, by, also owned by Rupert Murdoch. The website showcased lawsuits and salacious details about a former relationship. Hassan admitted to the Post that he was behind the website and said that he had since taken it down. It came together in a moment of frustration when I felt Alison and her attorney were telling one-sided stories to the press. Bit more than a, than a moment of frustration to put up a whole website slandering your ex-wife, isn't it? Um, after experts failed to track down who's behind the website, Hoon, also a tech entrepreneur, tried to herself. I stayed up all night and discovered a back door that Scott inadvertently did not close. So the genius of Silicon Valley was exposed by his wife using her technical knowledge. Poetic justice, she said. In a tweet posted hours before their case went to the court, she shared the registration document and taunted him. Hi, coward. You live by the sword. You will die by the sword. Revelation set the scene for what promises to be a bit of spectacle over how to split Hassan's assets worth more than $1 billion with the woman whose support was, she says, integral to his success. She has accused him of divorce terrorism. Um, he married, uh, they married when he was, 
Uh, she was a senior research fellow at Stanford's Robotics Laboratory, so she's hardly, you know, this, she's being kind of undermined in this slightly. Uh, in 2014, when she was away on a business trip related to her virtual reality company, My Dream, she received a text from her husband saying he wanted a divorce. She told the New York Times she was shocked. Hassan said she should not have been since they had argued days earlier over her assertions that he was having an affair. For seven years, a pair of feuded over how to divide his assets, which do not include his Google investment, now converted to $13 billion of stock in the parent company Alphabet. Their marriage was dissolved in 2020 and they share custody of three children. Uh, Hyung told The Post, his miserly position is ludicrous. I pray that a big tech billionaire will not get away with his attempt to cheat his children and me while he walks away with everything. In remarks to New York Times, Hassan stated, at the end of the relationship and through a divorce this lengthy, things are never easy and no one is at their best. I have no doubt we will land on a resolution that makes her a woman with generational wealth. He is a massive piece of shit, isn't he? Um, Bowie photographer harassed Bakers is another story on page three. A former music photographer who worked with stars including David Bowie, Rod Stewart and Barry Manilow has denied harassing four members of a Jewish baking dynasty. Leon Lacache, 69, allegedly sent abusive messages to Esther, Deborah, Jennifer and Ray Rinkoff, whose family have run the Eponymous Bakery in the heart of East End of London for more than a century. Lacache of South Kensington, West London, admitted sending letters between December 2020 in March this year to the Rinkoffs, as well as to Sarah Jane Adler, a lifestyle manager. I don't know what that is. Um, Jeffrey Kluman, the former bakery supplier, and Victoria Hoskins, a business consultant. However, he denied the amount of harassment and told police that he was in when he was interviewed that the communications were part of a technique he was using to get interest for a documentary on the Rinkoff family. Westminster Magistrates Court was told yesterday. Nathan Fuller for the prosecution said the complainants have all received messages from Mr. Glacash by email or letter. The messages themselves, the defendant does not deny sending. The defendant may it was to get interest in a documentary he was making on the family. Lakash, who denies harassment without violence, stand trial in January. He was bailed on condition that he does not contact the complainants. No reference here to what he wrote in those emails, though. Um, yeah, anyway. Uh, Beatles' memoir of lyrics includes unknown song. A handwritten scrawl in one of Sir Paul McCartney's old notebooks has been identified as an unknown Beatles song that the band never recorded. The words to Tell Me Who He Is written by McCartney in the early 60s, will be published for the first time in November in The Lyrics, a collection of song sheets compiled by the musician from his archive. The book will feature 154 songs illustrated with photographs of the lyrics and annotations by McCartney describing the inspiration from the inspiration for some of the lines. Sounds kind of interesting, but the book is going to cost £75 for two volumes, um, which seems a lot to me. Uh, yeah, took a misstep. If she'd done the same, she'd have been eviscerated by the press, says Slinkermeyer. Absolutely agree. Uh, good afternoon, Dick Pendron. How are you doing? Hello, Industrial Pet. For those of you joining me for the first time in Season 5, if you look at the bottom of the chat, you see the little picture of Werner Herzog. If you click on that, you can spend the channel points that many people have built up uh, over watching Season 3. You do various things like make me drink water, make me stand up properly, various other hilarious and fun uh, stuff. I, I'm going to try and make it do more things, but at the moment, I, that's the best I can do. Uh, Canine Behaviorist, 79, yeah, 75 quid, but yeah, I don't, I, I'm not sure that Paul McCartney needs that book to cost 75 quid. Um, it's coming out through Alan Lane, who are a uh, fairly specialist publisher, so I imagine it'll be a quite a luxurious product, but there you go. Um, also, hello to Canine Behaviorist, who is my father. Hello, Dad. Thank you for watching the show. Uh, on uh, page four, Tess predicts risk of premature birth 10 weeks into pregnancy. Um, I guess that's great news uh, in, in terms of just awareness. Uh, on page five, mission accomplished as late running crews lands in family's field. Uh, so apparently he was uh, late to an event and uh, landed in someone's field in his helicopter uh, when Coventry Airport was temporarily closed. I mean... One of those uh, Alan Partridge shrug type stories. Um, worst headline typeface in the UK press. That is a good. That is a good. Um, that is a good poll. I'll have a think about that question. Um, uh, a Euro's final steward has been caught in a sting. Who was caught in a sting has been spared jail time. Wembley steward was caught selling stolen lanyards, wristbands, and high vis jacket. People trying to sneak into the Euro 2020 final. Yusuf Army in 18 was detained after a fan helped police in a sting operation. I mean, I think it was pretty clear that was happening. Uh, during that final, given how many um, unticketed fans got into the stadium. Slinkermeyer says uh, she has 61,000 Herzogs. 
Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be very hydrated. Um, there are other things you can do with them in there, anyway. Um, we are not a threat, Netflix has told the BBC. Well, it is not a threat, because it, 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 Netflix is never likely to do local news or national news, for that matter. Uh, on pages 6 and 7, um, more reports from Afghanistan. Afghan guard dies in gunfight amid mayhem at Kabul airport, is the headline. Uh, Charlie Faulkner, uh, the Times uh, reporter in Kabul... Uh, really a bit of a grotesque headline on her, on her report from there. Riddled with bullets on way to buy fruit. Hospitals in the capital are at breaking point as wounded bystanders seek treatment. Uh, on the one hand, you can argue, well, okay, this is, um, this is, uh, you know, important on the ground reporting. But obviously, you know, reported in this kind of uh, hyperbolic, um, uh, overly detailed, grotesque manner. Um... A uh, former British soldier who works as a private contractor in Kabul said he felt overwhelming guilt at leaving his staff after catching an evacuation flight home. Lloyd Comer, 60, said hundreds of people had begged for his help to escape the Taliban. His Afghan friends wanted him to find them a way out, uh, as if I'm some sort of messiah, he told today on Radio 4. Fortunately, I'm not. My heart bleeds for these beautiful people and that crazy country. That crazy country. Um, Major General praises incredible British paratrooper soldiers who protected Kabul airport face the threat of death at any moment according to a letter written by the major general of the parachute regiment right um one of the big stories in the paper today is around a security breach after a person on the no fly list arrived in britain i think it's really interesting how this has been briefed in particularly um you know when there's been such criticism of the government for not bringing enough people in uh when you read into the detail this person was on the list but then when they looked into them they found that actually that they were not uh on on the assessment of the security services and, and police and others uh actually security risk in any way so we get that as a um as this big scary story but you read into the details and it's not nearly as scary as it suggested um apparently two university of Oxford students are trapped in Kabul despite having paperwork entitling them to come to the UK. They're currently in hiding. They have been denied flights. Uh, an update on that Sex Pistols um, TV uh, pr uh, project story, uh, Pistol, the Danny Boyle film. Uh, John, John Lyndon and uh, Johnny Rotten had been attempting to stop Sex Pistols uh, songs being used in uh, the project. The rest of the band wanted them used, and he's lost in court. He signed a document saying that majority decisions would be uh, abided by, and that's what's happened. Uh, an incredible picture of um, two white-tailed, or sea eagles, largest birds of prey found in Britain, tussling 100 feet above a lock on the Isle of Mull in the Inner Hebrides. That is an incredible picture. Um, always good to see uh, Brendan's in the chat to uh, to uh, make use of the the emotes as as you wish. Uh, on pages twelve and thirteen, booster shot for most vulnerable within weeks, but rest must wait. I mean, I think that doesn't seem unreasonable to me. Lockdowns could lead to weaker winter flu vaccine is the suggestion. Um, so Kamara can't, says, can't say I'm sorry to see John Lydon being thwarted. Me neither. Uh, on page 15, uh, love letter from prison cell costs buy to let boss 1.4 million pounds. Uh, my heart bleeds. Uh, many a besotted romantic will append a love letter they came to regret. Uh, property tycoon has been ordered uh, to pay his ex-partner 1.4 million after promising it to her in a missive he wrote from prison before making his fortune. 24 years ago, Sean Collins pledged to share the empire he intended to build on his release from jail with Nicola Overman. While his business ambitions became a reality, the relationship founded. Now the bike mogul has been told he must hand over the money to his former lover on the basis of the commitments he made in letters. There you go. Oh, yeah, yes. Yes, John Lydon in, his, in, in, in the butter ads. That's... that's uh, what, okay. Um... Farage's fuck face look, says, look forward to finally hearing the story of the Sex Pistols. I know, it's never been told before. Incredible. Um, yes, sorry about the Giles Corrin things. But if you uh, check out today's newsletter uh, where I write, which is really about uh, remembering our dear friend uh, Dawn Foster, uh, but also covers some uh, Giles Corrin-isms, uh, check that out there. It's brokenbottleboy.substack.com for the newsletter. Right, moving on. Um... According to the QI podcast, Robert Helpman found out 
um, after playing the trial catcher in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang that it's hard to get past some roles. Friend of Helpman's invited him for lunch, but called beforehand to explain that his children have seen the film and were terrified of meeting him. Could you say something over the phone to, so they know you're not really the child catcher? Helpman agreed and waited until the phone was passed over to the little ones before adopting his character's voice and shouting, I'm coming to get you, children. Okay, that's hilarious. Um, staycation has formed supermarket queues apart, atop... Britain's mountains, apparently so many people on the mountains that they're accused to get up them. I hate this notion of staycationing. Uh, going for a holiday in the same country uh, that you live in is not staycationing. It's just going on holiday, isn't it? It's just holiday without a flight. Uh, Slinkermeyer, uncritical support for trolling children. Agreed. Um, this thing about Ian Botham becoming a trade envoy to Australia is ludicrous. Um... Uh, they've discovered that um, tortoises can sometimes attack and eat live prey. They didn't think that was possible possible or happened before. It's pretty rare, though. It's um, a, a giant tortoise slowly but deliberately ate a baby bird. There's footage of it doing that. Um, Pride's fuckface says that Aussies respect a man who get his cock out in public. Having spent time living in Kilburn, I can confirm that to be true. Uh, on pages on page 19, church invited paedophile vicar to return after fine for molesting boy. The Church of England invited a paedophile vicar to resume his duties after he was convicted of molesting a boy in the 1980s, the court has been told. David Beater, Jesus Christ, the name. David Beater, 80, was jailed for other sex offences yesterday. He was sentenced to four and a half years for sexually assaulting two boys between 1982 and 1985. The... This is the and 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 yet we've got bishops still in the House of Lords. These people um, are unelected, given given place, given given seats in in our in our legislative chamber. And you know the Church of England is uh, guilty of this stuff in the same way that the Catholic Church is. Um, a British couple have told of their devastation after a wildfire swept through their terroir. Is that how you say that? The wine thing, terroir, yeah. terroir, yeah. Uh, in the south of France. Stephen Cronk. 57, I mean, I shouldn't laugh because it's a sad story, but Kronk is a great surname. Stephen Kronk, 57, and his wife, Jeannie Kronk, 48, moved to Provence in 2009 after selling up their home in southwest London to pursue their dream of opening a fine winery. But last week, the wildfire sweeping across the continent uh, reached the 9,600-acre, that's 39-square-kilometre terroir, burning a fifth of their vines and leaving many more potentially damaged by smoke taint. Nobody likes a smoke taint. Um, e two wooden barns and farm machinery were also destroyed. The Cronks award-winning Mirabeau wines, popular in the UK, Netherlands, Australia, and the US. Um, yeah, so, yeah, okay, that sucks for them. Killer tortoises is metal as fuck, says Slankermeyer, agreed. Um, yeah, a insane story yesterday that, um... The uh, uh, the chief suspect in the disappearance of Madeleine McCann was not questioned at the time by German police because he wasn't at home. Incredible. Incredible work there by the German police. Um, more fo a follow up on that story about the Blairs uh, supporting that charity that were was is suspected of fraud and uh, was uh, subject to a debt warning. Apparently uh, the Blairs continued to promote that charity after that. And remember, Tony Blair's daughter was chairperson of that charity. Uh, what qualified her to do that? Well, she's Tony Blair's daughter. As we know in this country, if you're related to someone famous, that's qualification enough to do virtually anything. Um, moving on, in the comments section, William Haig says, Africa will make the Afghan crisis seem like a sideshow. He's um, talking about um, Islamist groups within Africa. Because, yeah, uh, the UK interfering in Africa has, uh, has always gone well. Always gone really, really well. Um... Elsewhere in the comments section, Martha Gill writes, Authenticity is overrated, give us competence. Another column um, predicated on Love Island, as if there's no other thing that you can write about. And on the same page, Giles Corran, chuckling to himself in a Matt Chuckles Chorley manner, um, also writes about Love Island, amongst other things. Still hasn't written any kind of apology uh, for his Twitter slander of uh, the then recently passed Dawn Foster, for which, you know... 
Uh, and Hugo Rifkin says a trip around Europe through apps and masks. From German diligence to French enforcement, countries' pandemic responses put cultural differences back on the map. It's sort of a fine column, really, that it's... it's it, it's whatever. Um, in the birthdays today, Stephen Fry is 64. Anne Archer. It feels like he's been 64 forever, though, doesn't it? Anne Archer, the actress from Fatal Attraction, is 74. Dame Antonia Byatt, uh, the writer. Uh, so that's, AR, that's AS Byatt, isn't it? I'd say, yeah. Um, the writer, Possession, a romance, uh, which won the Booker Prize 1990, amongst others, is 85. Peter Gummer, Lord Chadlington, the chief executive of Hauntswork Public Relations Group, till 2015, is 79. Paolo Co Co Coelho, the author of The Alchemist, is uh, 74. Dr. Penelope Curtis, director of the Musée Calouste uh, Gulbenkian in Lisbon, is... Uh, and the Tate Britain is 60. You just gave me that cake and I'm now you're... eating the crumbs. You're eating my cake. Um, Elizabeth Debicki, the actress, is 31. So, God, I'm six years older than her. Insane. Um, Simon Dennis, the rower and Olympic gold medalist, is 45. David Freiberg, the musician in Jefferson Airplane and Jefferson Starship, uh, is 83. John Green, the author of Following Our Stars, is 44. Rupert Grint, the actor Ron Weasley in Harry Potter films, is 33. Poppy Gustafsson, the chief executive and co-founder of the cybersecurity firm Dark Trace. I mean... It's like a parody name for a company. It's 39. Daphid um, Ewan, the uh, folk singer and politician, president of Plaid Cymru, is uh, 78. <laughs> I've just had to move my cake. <gasps> but you eat this, so I should have to kick. I did eat that. Yeah. Uh, I, I, my dad says bloody prof. I know, I know. I, I'm trying to do the show and my cake is being stolen. Eat the cake. Go on. No, look, eat you the got crumbs everywhere. There you go, eat the cake. Have the cake and eat it. Um, Lyndon Quasi Johnson is 69. Nice. Uh, Michel Jarre, the musician, is 73. Jean-Michel Jarre, sorry, is 73. Roger Lewis, the president of the National Museum of Wales, is 67. Professor Alexander McCall Smith, the novelist, uh, is 73. He's a professor. Where? Um, Charlie Massey, the chief executive and registrar of the General Medical Council, is 51. Marley Maitland, the actress, is 56. Happy birthday to her. Amanda Millar, the president of the Law Society of Scotland until June 2021, is 50. Dr. Madsen Pyrie, the founder and president of the Adam Smith Institute, is 81. Ali Smith, the novelist, is 59. Sir John Sunderland, the chancellor of Ashton University and president of the Confederation of of British industry until 2006 is 76. Joe Tilson, the pop art painter, sculptor, and printmaker, is 93. Sam Torrance, the golfer with 21 European Tour wins, is 68. And Ewan Ventus, the chief executive of Fortnum and Mason until January 2021, is 49. On this day in AD 79, Mount Vesuvius erupted, burying in Pompeii and Herculean, Herculaneum. Sorry, in volcanic, volcanic ash. In 410, Rome was overrun by the Visigoths, uh, a Germanic people. In 18... You can't, you can't trust the Goths, can you? In 1814, British troops stormed Washington and set fire to the White House. And the last word in this column today goes to Stephen King in The Shining. We sometimes need to create unreal monsters and bogeys to stand in for all the things we fear in our real lives. So there you go. Person in the room has no right to cake, says Dick Pendry. She absolutely does. Um, red tick seed. Person in the room stealing food from children again. That's true. I am a, a full eight years and full eight years younger. A full eight years younger. Person in the room should be ashamed. Probably should be expelled from the room. To be honest. Person out of the room. No. And here she is eating the cake. Mm. Disrupting the show with cake. I mean, um, love it. Slinka Meyer says, as a semi-goth, I agree that you can't trust the goths. Yeah. Um, moving on. Taliban victory inspires jihadist attacks in Africa is the claim. Look at that. That's in the news. And, and um, William Hague's got that in his column. Coincidence? I think not. Um, wind tunnel advantage. Wind tunnel gives China advantage in supersonic weapons is the claim. Uh, there's an amazing picture of... Um, Morani, the oldest lion in the Maasai Mara Reserve in Kenya. Unfortunately, that is um, as a result of the death of his brother, Scarface. Do we know? I, as far as I know, Morani was not involved in the death. This is not a Lion King scenario. But anyway, incredible picture. Morani is 14 years old. An absolute badass of a lion. Um, 
hackers exposed Tehran jail abuse. Har hackers have access security camera video from inside an Iranian prison where British citizens being held and posted clips of guards beating inmates. Um, a far-right pundit looks likely to make a run for the Elysee in France. Far-right polemicist and popular TV pundits close to standing for the French presidency in a move that could upset the campaign of Marine Le Pen. Well, if they divide the vote, that would be great. Um, yes, agree with you, Dad. Scumbag um, American trophy hunter uh, killed uh, killed the, old, the eldest lion. It's just grotesque, isn't it? Uh, that it's still allowed is just horrendous. Uh... First in the queue, my mom is in the chat as well today. This is a, this is, this is the full family chat. Hello, first in the queue, how are you doing? Um, far right TV pundit, yes, that is right. It, the person is um, Eric Zemmour. Uh, Zemmour, the darling of the far right voters who believe that Le Pen, the leader of the national rally, has gone soft, has been teasing France with the prospect of an unvarnished anti-immigrant, anti-Islamic candidacy since supporters called for him to stand early this year. The month he said he was hesitating because of the 500 signatures and the money required, but added, I have a lot of friends. We'll see after the holidays. Uh, polls show that Zemmour, who attracts at least a million viewers a day to his evening slot on C News, a conservative channel, GB News for the French, um, would gain only 5.5% of the vote if the first round of the presidential election was held now. President Macron and his La Republique En Marche party would welcome Zemmour's candidacy because it would steal votes from Le Pen. Although behind in the polls, she remains the main challenger to Macron despite a setback for her party in regional elections in June. Zemmour would also take votes from the candidate for the mainstream conservative Republicans who have yet to be designated. So there you go. Um, in Spain, a Robin Hood mayor sacked carer who wanted a holiday. A mayor dubbed the Robin Hood of Spain has been accused of sacking an employee for going on holiday. Juan Manuel Sanchez Godillo has been mayor of um, Marinelda for four decades, hosting weekly TV shows to explain how the town of 2,500 people can, has become a communist utopia. Now a home carer is threatening to shatter his image after claiming in 23 years an employee of the Munist party, she was not allowed to take paid holiday once, and that she was sacked for demanding that right. Concepcion Gonzalez said, He told us in our town there is no culture of holidays, that it is bourgeois. She is banned back by one of Spain's most powerful unions. Sanchez Gordillo was hailed as a hero for expropriating land from an aristocrat and setting up a cooperative farm. He disbanded the police, saying locals could police themselves. Townsfolk are encouraged to volunteer and carry out repairs. During the financial crisis, he organised raids on supermarkets to collect food for families hit by the crisis. He was unavailable for comment. Uh, SK the Crusader, hello, hello to you. You are eating Mr. Cod, that is good. Uh, yeah, I, t t t welcome to the parent stream where both my parents are watching uh, the stream today. Uh, there will be no reduction in swearing. So there you go. Who did I learn it from? Um, super yacht traffic jams uh, are happening as the mega rich sail back to the Riviera. So, good news there. Uh, Red Tick Seed Daddy Stream. No, not that. Uh, front page of the Times 2 today is more scare stories about um, plastic surgery, alien faces, and the rise of Love Island lips. Um, and uh, finally in the world news, blind crab man comes out of his shell to adulation in France. Crabs are often fished out of the English Channel by hand off the seaside resort of Eritat in Normandy when Christopher Le Boucher was a boy in the 1960s. Today is just about, today is about the only local who still does, goes in for noodling, as the art of fishing with bare hands is known. The blind fisherman's attachment to tradition is turning him into something of a media star, with Le Figaro becoming the latest outlet to feature him. The paper devoted a full page article to his habit of wading through the coastal waters of the channel in search of crabs and lobsters, which he plucks from rocks behind the surface. Uh, beneath the surface, mostly without getting hurt. Martin Benoist, 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 sorry, a filmmaker, spent a year following Le Boucher for a 52-minute television documentary, La Saison de Tourneau, uh, Torteau, sorry, yeah, The Season of Edible Crabs, which was shown on the state-owned France 3 channel in 2020 and which will be screened in cinemas in Normandy. Benoist, who met uh, Le Boucher when he moved to Eritrat, told Le Figaro, Christophe has, some, has something mythological about him. He's a character who seems to float outside the world. Well, that seems like a nice story, doesn't it? Um, Dick Pendron, also hello to old mother Mick. Yeah, not too much of the old, come on now. She's a, not a, t you know. Anyway, right, in the business news, EasyJet summons crisis manager. Stephen Hester gained a reputation at RBS and RSA for rescuing troubled companies. Um, could still be a private equity bid for Sainsbury's. I mean, 
whatever. America braced for slowdown in jobs uh, growth after Delta cases rise. Patrick Hoskins, uh, the financial editor of the Times, says diversification is all the rage. But is it better to stick to the knitting? Uh, well, no. I mean, I think it's right that Sharon Lewis is, Lewis is diversifying John Lewis, frankly. Um, right, there's loads of stuff about commercial renters and stuff. Uh, yes, can I, the, the uh, canine behaviorist is ancient. He is, a, he is an ancient man. Um, Universal Music Group has announced an exclusive deal with Aerosmith to house the band's entire recorded catalogue as the world's largest music label prepares to go public next month. Uh, in the obituaries, Jill Murphy, best-selling children's author and illustrator known for her quirky books about a school for witches. That is the worst witch, which frankly, um, you know, J.K. Rowling cribbed a hell of a lot from. Um... Also in the obituaries, Eddie Healy, reclusive property developer who built one of Britain's largest retail parks and was the victim of a terrifying home robbery. The pullout um, quote on his obituary is, he loved parties and once paid girls allowed £125,000 to play at his 70th birthday. There you go. Uh, John Lewis is now Sharon Lewis. Did, did I read the person's name? Did I read her name right? I'm pretty sure that she is the chief executive of uh, John Lewis. I'm going to have to go back and check now. You've uh, Sharon White. Sorry, Sharon White. John Lewis is led by Sharon White. Uh, she's teamed up with uh, Nutmeg to offer um, investment products and done various other things. Um... Uh, watchdogs, uh, da, da, da. well, hang on, we're in the obits, right, uh, and the other obituary, Phyllis Gould, wartime metal worker who was thought to be the last of the original Rosie, so-called after a famous poster campaign, that's, uh, Rosie Riveter, we can do it, um, she's died, she was 99, um, yeah, so there you go, um, in the sport, is Flojo's record about to fall? And that could be just the start of it. Thompson Hera at the forefront of a group chasing down athletics on touchable records. Uh, expect season to carry on in bonkers fashion is their report on the F1. Um, Europe may uh, put three rookies into its Solheim Cup team uh, to defend the title. Um, and on the back page of the sport, clubs won't let players travel. C City and Liverpool in FIFA standoff over World Cup qualifiers. R Joe Root says the England team needs to cope better in the cricket. And Premier League referee Chiefs will continue to allow more physical approach by players after receiving overwhelming positive feedback from the first two weekends of the season, despite criticism from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Jurgen Klopp. I think that there should be... Um, the game should be more physical, and I know that Canine Behaviourist is going to agree with that. Anyway, um, that is today's times for me. Well, okay, there's a couple of good animal pictures, so let's say it's a minus 67. Uh, two off the classic negative nice. Uh, right, so that's the times. Uh, now, we're going to do the sun. Um, uh, content warning for this, the front page of the story today is about domestic violence. So, uh, you're going to see... Um, you are going to see uh, see that image, basically, and we're going to be discussing the story about domestic violence and the son's uh, poor um, coverage and treatment of that. So just be aware of that. Right. Uh, Sankamaya gives uh, gives the uh, Times the classic negative nice. Uh, Red Tick seed in with a double negative nice. Chronotherm says bring back hacking, which caused some teams to refuse to join the FA when it began. Uh, yeah, let's let's just have a whole chopper. Let's let's go back to Chopper Harris uh, style football, right? Okay, so here is the Sun front front page of the Sun um, is about the assault uh, on um, Katie Price. Uh, the the quote from her here: "I was punched, then I ran." Uh, notice that they uh, put assault in quote marks. They do that because um, someone has been held on suspicion of the assault, uh, but it's, um, you know, I, I, I don't know if they've yet been charged. Uh, yeah, pretty grim, uh, pretty grim all around, and I would be fairly sure that the son um, kind of elbowed her into this exclusive, sorry, that's a bad way of phrasing it, but you know, uh, encouraged her into that exclusive. On page three, that isn't page three, but is page three, uh, kind of grim thing, which is, um, a report about um, uh, Leanne, uh, Leanne Pinnock um, from Little Mix uh, giving birth to twins, and they accompany in that picture by 
uh, accompany that story by a picture of her in a bikini from an earlier shoot, which is um, pretty grim. Uh, they continue on the uh, Katie Price story on pages four and five. I've got a big bruise and my face is all puffy. I'm still dazed is the quote. Um, and they, uh, yeah, they they talk about her, her partner who uh, it seems is probably the person who was held on suspicion of the assault. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a grim story overall. It's a grim sto story overall. Um, on uh, page six, Spain, France, and Greece to stay on Amber List. Uh, page seven, Jack Grealish was seen out um, a night going to nightclubs and a, a Love Island star, um, Ellie Brown, was there too. Uh, they apparently are friends, but of course the son is implying uh, that there's a relationship going on there. He is, of course, in a relationship with his uh, as what we are required to call for tabloid purposes, childhood sweetheart. Uh, moving on, on pages eight and nine, Taliban's red line. Get out in one week or it's war. Thousands still wait for rescue. Um, yeah, various pictures of, of, of soldiers talking to children. Um, yeah. Oh, coverage as you'd expect. On page 10, Wembley steward sobs at jail. Let off. This is the uh, steward who... Uh, sold uh, lanyards, wristbands, and high-vis jackets. Uh, more on the bloody alpaca story. Um, canine behavior says, reality shows and stars don't go together. That's why I did this. Um, alpaca hope as TB quest, uh, quest uh, test query. Geronimo the alpaca remains alive, alive, much to the chagrin of Sakir Starmer, who uh, has been wandering around with an axe. Uh, on page 11, Joy of Love Island winners, pair to net, big money deals. This is, yeah, I mean, this always happens. This is standard. Uh, C122H122 says, Keir wants blood. Yeah, uh, who wants to be a million a millionaire is the headline on that Love Island story, of course, because one of the winners is called Millie. Um, on page 13, Rihanna wore clothes. That's worthy of a story. Tom Tugendhat on page 12. When territory is held by radical Islamic groups, terrorism follows. What is his answer? I presume more war. Uh, on, also on page 13, after August gloom, finally, summer's out for school. 27 centigrade in kids' last holiday weeks. It's almost like that happens pretty much every September. Um, our, uh, our favourite potato-headed boy, Adrian Childs, writes, I only drink booze. I want to drink. It's changed my life. I mean, the banality is incredible. Um, it, there's a story about, he writes about someone getting a West Brom tattoo on their arse. Uh, um, talks about a documentary about Nixon. Uh, and he's apparently got into origami. I mean, incredible scenes. Uh, Dr. Kate Devlin... Person in the room is now person in the chat sending cake emojis. Thank you for that. I mean, you're literally in the room. Uh, on page 17, machete carjack in drive. Thug gang steals motor. Uh, this was... Um, where is this? They've got really bad... You, you put what, when, where, why at the uh, beginning of places. Okay, they did this... Uh, where was this? Okay, this was in Walkden, Greater Manchester. Uh... It was a BMW. One robber got in the car and said, don't fuck, about, fuck with us, mate. The victim then tried to open the driver's door, but the thief sped off. Uh, the clip racked up nearly 2 million views on TikTok. Well, there you go. All right, SK, thank you for being here. Red Six Seed says, person in the room, Cake Devlin. Um, Cronathan, I swear Adrian Charles employed to keep people thinking all us Midlanders are simpleton. Yeah, he's an op. He's an anti-Midlands op. Polly1787 is always hot in school in September. Starting to think we should break up in mid-August. People do say that. I, I've often thought that the that where the summer holiday is, is positioned should change. Of course, it's, you know, it's a, it's a historical throwback, isn't it? Uh, Cake Devlin, now your pen name. Yeah, it's good. Uh, on pages 18 and 19, our writer on challenge and terror of doing SAS, Who Dares Wins? It's Ulrika Johnson, who says, I'm no diva, I'm a Swede, and we shit in the woods. Swedes are bears now. Um, but the fear and shock when they put you in that black hood. I mean, SAS, Who Dares Wins? Ludicrous. 
Uh, okay, on page 21, Queen's Fond Regards. Taurus, pay attention at changing the guard is performed at Buckingham Palace for the first time since the start of the pandemic. Oh, who cares? Uh, and their, their headline for the story about the um, predator tortoise is Shell's Teeth, which is not bad, is it? Um, get person in the room a coin theme cake. She would love a coin theme cake. Not convinced, no coins. You love cake that much, Dave. Yeah. Cake. Um, in the bizarre column, uh, Cardi B has worn clothes. Kanye West is rowing with Drake again. Is there any way they can both lose? And uh, Beyonce has worn a dress. Uh, oh, hey, Neon Lady. I'm sorry you're a bit under the weather. I hope that you feel better soon, but thank you for watching. Um, Kanye Beharist, uh, or as soldiers, they could be doing something useful. Exactly. Oh, uh, Neon Lady says I should hydrate. Mmm, delicious mustard. Um, uh, see what's going to do. Does Sven shit in the woods? We can only assume. Um, how can you have enough coins? You can never have enough coins. But the thing is, they're not coins, are they? They're commemorative roundels that look a bit like coins. By the way, they keep sending me coins I have to send back now. So the joke of getting that Prince Philip coin has really, um, you know, worked against me. Um... I don't know what Vasilopita is. What is Vasilopita? Is that type of cake? Oh. Farage's fuck face, you've lost me there. Um, think of my love that I'm continuing the mustard bit. Yeah, it's because I'm in Norfolk. I just drink mustard. Um, there's a story about a elephant getting angry and attacking a sculpture, thinking it was a love rival. Love it. He's just... He def easily defeated that one. Oh, okay, Vasilopita is a, literally a cake with coins in it. Okay, cool. I have not... I've never come across that before. Um, third of adults are apparently clueless about how to do DIY. Uh, don't know how to unclog a sink, put up a shelf, change a light bulb, change oil in the car, fix a hole in the wall, or wire a three-pin plug. All things that they could teach you at school, but don't. So, you know. Um, yeah, I love the elephant. The elephant is great. Uh... <laughs> Red Tick Seed, Mick sewing, uh, in brackets, getting coins. Ha <laughs> ha, fuck yeah, yes. Mick reaping, getting more coins. Well, this fucking sucks, what the fuck. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, look, look. Another, another commemorative coin is in here. I didn't ask for it. I've got to send it back. Um... Prize's fuck face. Don't need to learn how to put up a shelf as I can do that as I can't do that in rented flats. There is that, yeah. Uh Kano Mahiris keeps quiet about DAI skills, saves him the work. Well, you, you, you're very handy. Um Poly1787, I couldn't teach those things at school. Yeah, well I know, yeah. Does it cost money if if, if you keep it? Yeah, it does. Um Prize's fuck face, recognized reckon DIY skills gone down because everyone just calls their landlords to do it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's a load of reasons why. There's a, like, if you're not allowed to put a picture up, you, and you, you're not exactly going to put shelves up, are you? Um, I think I, I think this is some stuff about Ikea as well, and pre-packed furniture, and all sorts of stuff. Anyway, uh, on pages 28 and 29, Saran Jones says, uh, talks about her new cop show, and her second lesbian role. She said, th she's thought, great, I'm doing my own stunts, but I'm 43, not 23. Um, and for some reason, there's just a lot of Saran Joan legs on that page. You know, she's got great legs, fair dudes, but you know. Um, right, in the uh, on the TV pages, um, just an excuse to show Maya Jama in a bikini top. Uh, in uh, TV review, Tsunami uh, on Channel 5 last night gets a good review. Tonight's TV picks, the opening ceremony, oh, today's TV picks, the opening ceremony of the Paralympics. You've just missed it. It was on 11.30 a.m., uh, Britannia on Sky Atlantic is back. Uh, brutal blood and br blood spattered, if you like that kind of thing. Um, the last leg, uh, the Tokyo edition, uh, is on at 10 p.m. on Channel 4. And Love Your Cottage Garden special on ITV, 8 p.m. I would just love a garden of any kind. Um, uh, in Dear Deirdre today, someone says they're married to a serial cheat. Someone else's partner has become spiteful and cold. Someone else is scared by scary clown. Oh, they printed my letter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Someone else has become... I'm, I'm very much not cold. Uh, some scary clown ornaments are giving someone nightmares. A man dressed as a clown attacked my friend's father when I was a kid and it caused me to have nightmares. It's much more serious than the headline suggests. I don't even know what they were arguing about, but I remember my friend's dad lying on the floor with blood all over his face. I was six at the time and have a deep-rooted fear of clowns. My wife knows nothing about it. We're both 47. My wife's parents moved to a smaller house recently and as a result they've been offering us things they don't need. They cleared out their last loft last week and my father-in-law arrived with a box full of ornaments from my wife's childhood years. I opened the box and was horrified to see clown faces looking up at me. I let out a yell and was literally shaking. My father-in-law just laughed at me. The nightmares are starting to come back. I don't want these things in my house. I am absolutely in favour of uh, pro this person not having scary clowns in their house. Um, my model mother wants to do nudes, says someone. I feel like Will from the Inbetweeners because all my mates fancy my mum. She's 32 and I'm 16. I don't know my dad. She's pretty and she keeps herself fit and she's done a lot of catalogue modelling, which is fine, but she told me last week she's been approached to do nude work. She wants to do it, but she wanted to talk to me about it first. It will pay her well, but if my mates find out she's done a porno, will everyone be laughing at me? Um, wow, yes, right into the sun, which of course is extremely... Um, extremely uh unlikely to be critical of of women doing nudes is it um so yeah fab daily we spent thousands on designer kit for our boys for school why why though they grow out of the clothes so quickly uh this is a kid wearing a tommy hilfiger anorak um industrial pet i would simply not have told him uh, simply have not told him yeah i mean i think it's a bit I think it's a bit weird going, hello, 16-year-old son, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do nude modelling. I, I, am I allowed? I fucking just get him to get a grip. Um, what your lawn says about you... Oh, this is fucking ridiculous. Uh, if you have AstroTurf, you're lazy. No, no kidding. Brown patches uh, suggest that you uh, love life. Stripes say you're a snob, it says here. Curved borders say you're a control freak. A wild lawn means you're a yummy mummy. Weed infested means you're a slob, and if you don't have a lawn, it means uh, that you're renting. I don't, the, yeah. I, anyway, the batch ladies' recipes this week: to chicken noodle soup that looks disgusting, and bread and butter pudding pudding that looks quite nice. How about an um, effing messy lawn? Um, apparently, a messing lawn. I don't know. You got your lawn's fine. It's just very natural. Yeah, who cares anyway? Lawns. Right, moving on. Um, right, letters pages. Today's letter comes from, 50 pound letter comes from Christina Brooks of uh, Shanklin in the Isle of Wight, who says she was saddened to see the plight of the Afghans desperate to leave their country. Um, it's literally just a, a rewritten news report. Um, Michael Frost of Romford says, we are said to be a nation of animal lovers. Where's that love now for Geronimo the alpaca, who is due to be killed over bovine TB fears? I don't think enough has been done to find a more lenient solution. Michael, we have animal health legislation for a reason. You don't seem to be bothered by the thousands of cows that are put down every year for this reason. Um... Uh... Uh, C122 says, I have a dog and he digs. What does that mean? Yeah, it means you're a dog lover. I agree with Kano, uh, Kano Ravers. Red Tixie says, kill the alpaca. Uh, C122 says, Keir wants blood. Red Tixie's just chanting blood now. The alpaca story boils my piss, this industrial pet. Mine too. Read the... Um, uh, if, if you want to know what I think about the alpaca thing, do read the newsletter edition from a while back about it. It's a, it's a, such an old, an old school, like, um, tabloid... Uh, what is a newspaper? I meant to write a newsletter. The commands only work if I do them properly. Uh, I might just... There we go. Um, yeah. Uh, also, they're trying to sell you men's pull-on leisure trousers. Uh, you know, for, for the man who's given up on life. Available in charcoal grey, denim, teal and black. As, long, as well as wide fit shoes. There you go. Um... Also trying to sell you vacuum cleaners, a, re a really ugly kitchen. Um, do you like money? If so, read on. This could be of interest. Um, life policy reclaim. Definitely not ambulance chasing lawyers. Do you like money? 
Um, those trousers are the clip-on tie of trousers, says Neon Lady. Absolutely agree. Um, in the sport, uh, and in the sport, back page of the sport, ants are cut out above. Uh, Mikhail Antonio became West Ham's top Premier League scorer ever and celebrated with a cutout of himself. His double against 10-man Foxes sent the Hammers top of the league. If it, it took his tally to 49 Premier League goals, too clear of Paolo Di Canio. Uh, Iozzi Perez saw red for a horror tackle on Pablo Fornals. Antonio said, I am making history, so I had to do something special. And the main story on the back page, Mo Go Zones, Salah and Prem stars to be blocked from World Cup qualifiers. Liverpool are leading the Premier League into a fight with FIFA by blocking their stars from playing in World Cup qualifiers next month. The Merseysiders have banned Mo Salah from featuring for Egypt on the UK's COVID red list, so he does not miss three club games while in quarantine. Liverpool are understood to have told the Brazilian FA that Alisson, Fabinho and Roberto Firmino are unavailable. Manchester City will join their rival stance by pulling out Brazilian players Ederson and Gabriel Jesus if there are no quarantine exemptions. Tottenham are also keen to stop uh, their internationals from going. Um, Chronotherm says, looking forward to trousers line with formaldehyde to help preserve my corpse in advance. Right, that was The Sun. It was a typically horrible edition of The Sun. Uh, triple negative nice from me. So that's a minus 69, 69, 69. Uh, now we're going to move on. I mean, oh, we're... we're, we're, we're have we got to, right? I'm going to do a speed run through the Telegraph, and then we're going to do a quick run from the, through the Daily Mail. Right. So uh, Telegraph in. Well, I'm going to ask you how much, how quickly I can do the Telegraph, and you're going to say three minutes. I don't know why I even asked. Three minutes. Right. It's very difficult to do the Telegraph in three minutes because it's a very large. Um, <laughs> my mother has redeemed redeemed a posture check. Thank you for that. Um, it's very hard to do unless you have a butler to iron it for you. But let's do this. Uh, we're not using. In season five, we've given up using the Google Assistant to um, do the timer because it always goes wrong. Do you want me to do the timer What's that? Do you want me to do the timer? Yes, go. Yes, go. Yes, go. Okay, go. Three minutes. Yeah, go. Starting. Starting nine. Okay, front page of the Telegraph. Uh, oh God, I haven't put the I haven't put the image up. Right. So, well, this is fine. I'm going to just have to include this in the time. Uh, Person in the room is too busy stealing cake to iron the Torograph. The that, that is the fact. The cake is gone. On the front page of the Telegraph, um, Lennon versus T. McCartney. Who is the Beatles' greatest genius? I mean, honestly, what? Uh, like, who gives a fuck at this point? Um, elsewhere on that front page, security suspect escaped to UK from Kabul. Again, uh, this story completely overplayed. Um, uh, Extinction Rebellion threatened two weeks of chaos. Pictures of um, uh Cops trying to uh, take a protester off the top of a van. Majority of care homes expect to sack staff if current rate of vaccine refusal persists. I, I really cannot see why care home staff would reject the vaccine. I mean, they give reasons, but they all seem fairly ludicrous. Civil servants heartbreak over Afghan boy's death. A civil servant um, from the Home Office has written an article in here saying she's heartbroken about the death of a boy who fell from the ninth floor window at a Sheffield hotel where his family was being temporarily housed. Uh, her bleeding heart means whatever, but frankly, um, concerns had been expressed about that hotel long before uh, families were put there. Um, inside, uh, a picture of the Eagles fighting that we've seen before, uh, the story of uh, Dominic Cummings debating Brexit for three hours with restaurant staff who refused to serve him. It's kind of ridiculous. What's the time check? Um, one minute 40 left. Jesus. Okay, Afghan teachers will give their lives to keep educating girls is the story. Um, Biden isolated amid calls to extend deadline. Uh, Rotten loses fight to stop drama using pistol songs. A gold-plated cast of Pele's foot is among items being sold uh, at auctions to raise money for Brazil's fight against COVID. Uh, there's a family walking a horse down the road. It's a little miniature pony. Um, Australia set to shift from unsuitable lockdowns, uh, but Arden urges caution. Police stand by as emboldened XR activists bring central London to grinding halt. The Telegraph hates protests. Uh, far right and anti fascists have clashed in Portland. Uh, God, this paper is unwieldy. Sherelle Jacobs uh, says we must learn from tragic performance war in Afghanistan. Uh, Marie Cowarth um, Dowder, a uh, academic at Oxford, says the woke war on our classical path is as lazy as it is wrong headed. It's not a t day in the Telegraph without a story about the woke. This is G7, a turning point for the West, says Tom Tugendhat, managing to do a column both for the Sun and the Telegraph. Charles Moore says, will the lion's son be Afghanistan's savior? No, I'd say not. Um, features and arts. Can you really have a, a booze fun, a booze three festival? The rise and fall of crypto addicts. 
Charlotte Lynn says the police can solve their problems with a lick of rain, can't solve their problems with a lick of rainbow paint. We've got um, three people saying whether they like Lennon or McCartney, with um, Neil McCormack saying he likes both. Uh, what an incredible uh, position to take. And that is the paper. And they, a TV review says Mastermind is in safe hands with Clive Myrie. I think Clive Myrie's good. I haven't seen his first edition yet. And that is the Telegraph. And that was the Daily Telegraph. There you go. Uh, hey, Zoe brings bacon. How are you doing? Uh, <laughs> Red Tix, he says, Lenin or McCartney? Hard to say, isn't it? Um, um, do, do, do. The elephant was good. We like the elephant. The elephant is good. Uh, right. Uh, finally, we come to the Daily Mail, our last paper of the day. Typically, uh, you know, the worst usually. So here we go. Uh, front page of the Daily Mail. They, of course, uh, have had the same briefing as the Telegraph, uh, Sun and others about this uh, security alert over UK airlift. Uh, you know, um, Lenin or McCarthy says Kin United you too. Uh, C122, H122 prefers Lenin's earlier work. Um, Red Tixi says, don't think Lenin abused his wife, so we're going to have to go with him. On page three of Started, as Clive Myrie takes over from John Humphreys on Mastermind, our reviewer gives his verdict. It's four stars for that. Um, the Daily Mail claims Facebook fuels child grooming. Uh, yeah, you know what else also fuels child grooming? Massive reductions in um, child uh, safety budgets at uh, councils. Um... Channel 4 quiz with a £100,000 prize for just one right answer. Contestants win £100,000 on a new game show just by answering a single question correctly. Channel 4 is offering the huge prize on its latest primetime quiz, One Question. Uh, on pages 4 and 5... Uh, two families and two tales of ecstasy and anguish, Afghan news. Um, they have uh, one of the classic Daily Mail map of uh, the uh, Kabul airport. Um, how difficult can it be for a newsreader to read questions from a card? Not difficult at all, but the question is, you know, what is the kind of um, vibe you have? So, like, Magnus Magnuson was more, you know, um, uh, welcoming, and John Humphreys was... Uh, awful and got my name wrong twice during my recording. Not that I hold it against him, although I absolutely hold it against him. On air, pages eight and nine, will Biden snub PM's plea? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, and now, of course, they're starting to um, uh, suggest that uh, this guy that went to Sandhurst and is the son of a former Mujahideen leader is the new um, is the new hope for Afghanistan. We've always got to have this. We like. Uh, there's always going to be a rebel group that we decide are perfectly acceptable, even though, you know, they're hugely corrupt. Um, on page 11, Love Island winners now set to rake in thousands. I mean, this is not a story. Of course that happens. They get endorsements. Um, milkshake uh, deliveries are, milkshakes are off the menu at uh, McDonald's as a driver shortage, uh, as the driver shortage has started to affect them, lorry driver shortage. Is there a mention here of it being, um, uh, being as a result of Brexit? Yes, but also of the pandemic. Um... Today's ridiculous culture war story is like one person saying that the tiger who came to tea reinforces gender inequality. Um, I mean, who cares? Revealed traffic trafficker in dock over tragedy in Channel that toddler cost to, toddler art in his life. How male uncovered suspect suburban sanctuary. Oh, okay. um, Anti-vax mob invades ITN. They harass Jon Snow, which is horrible. Um, he this Jon Snow loads lots of things. Uh, what's the point of a PCR test? Travel data missing for one in four passages. It's almost like the system is a complete joke. On page 17, cruelest twist of Britain's first one million pound kidnap. They wanted Rupert Murdo Murdoch's wife, but snatched the wrong woman. Now her family prayer TV documentary 50 years on could crack the case. Um, accidental victim, they say. L Little John is awful. We're not bothering with it. Uh, Joe Biden doesn't care about uh, J uh, Boris Johnson, says C122, H122. Agreed. Um, Kano Mayer says, what was the inside leg measurement of em Emperor Nero? Um, I don't know. Nobody got that Nero to check. Um, right. Uh, they've got a picture of um, Jonathan Price playing Prince Philip in The Crown. Whatever. Um, Parky, uh, uh, Michael Parkinson has apologised to Meg Ryan uh, for being angry and pompous in an interview he did with her. He did so many horrible ones. Um, £100,000 question for one question, yeah. Uh, on pages 25, uh, 24 and 25, Love Island clones are a curse on our daughters. 
writes Melanie McDonough. This, from the mail, that obsesses over it. Like, it, I guarantee you, if I went to Mail Online now, you would find countless stories about Love Island, countless pictures of women in bikinis, but, you know, but the mail tries to have this both ways. Um, it's almost like they try to have the kid. It's almost like they try to have their cake and eat in today's cake-themed story. Um, more from Hayley Mills' biography, uh, autobiography today on pages 26, uh, pages 28 and 29. Doomed marriage to movie titan 32 years older. She was a young star. He was more than twice her age. Within weeks, she knew it was failing, as told with brutal honesty. And for cash in the Daily Mail. Um, August 24th, 2021 is the day. And on this day in August 24th, 1967, the Daily Mail wrote, The last legal escape hall for Nazi murderers in West Germany is to be closed. Dr. Gustav Heinemann, Minister of Justice, today announced the government's decision to abolish the statute of limitations in the case of murder and genocide. That means that thousands of Nazis will never be safe from prosecution. Uh, August 24th, 1970, the Daily Mail wrote, ITN newscasters Reginald Bosenko and Sandy Gall are wearing makeup in front of the cameras for the first time. We decided to ask for makeup after my 12-year-old daughter said how awful I looked, Mr. Bosenko said. I had been working 11 days out of 13 and felt the bags under my eyes were down to my knees. Born on this day, Elizabeth Debicki, she's 31, Paris-born Australian actress, shot to fame as Tom Hilston's love interest in The Night Manager. She played Princess Diana in uh, season two of Netflix, The Crown. She will play... Um, Sorry, she will play Princess Diana in the final two seasons of uh, Netflix's The Crown. Uh, she's also in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. She's very good. Um, Stephen Fry is 64. Um, he was voted one of Britain's top 20 national treasures in a YouGov poll. What is a national treasure? You just hang along, hang around long enough, I guess. Also born on this day, Kenny Baker, of course, who played um, R2-D2. Uh, he was uh, born in 1934, died 2016. He was 3 foot 8 inches tall. Uh, he made his name as the man inside R2-D2. Though his character was a friend to C-3PO, Baker's relationship with the actor Anthony Daniels, who played uh, C-3PO, was less warm. He really degraded me and made me feel small, Daniels hit back. I mean, R2-D2 doesn't even speak. He might as well be a bucket. Jesus, it's horrible. Yasser Arafat was also born on this day in 1929, died in 2004. He was the leader of the Palestinian Liberation Organization, born Mohammed Abdul Rahman Abdul Rauf Arafat al uh, Kudwa al Husseini in Egypt. In 1953, he sent Egypt's first post revolutionary leader, General Mohammed um, Neguib, a plea Don't forget Palestine. It was said to have been written in his own blood. On August 24th, in 1947, the first Edinburgh International Festival opened, and in 1991, Ukraine declared independence. Quote of the day comes from Edgar Bergen, the US ventriloquist. Was it him or was it his dummy? Hard work never killed anyone, but why take a chance? Joke of the day. What do you call an insect on a pogo stick? A grasshopper. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, Polly1787 says, I assume the male were fairly critical of that story about Nazis facing prosecution. Yet today's joke, not funny. Uh, backlashes councils go too green by ditching chemical weed killer. People are annoyed about... Um, grassy verges, basically. Um, Lady Kitty Spencer's friend had a wedding, and that gets a story. I mean, really. Um, have you missed Chloe? You've not missed Chloe. Uh, drama giving heroic care a starring role they so richly deserve. This is about the uh, Jodie Comer, uh, Stephen Graham drama that's coming out. They review various fizzy drinks that are meant to be good for your health. The highest scoring one is um, Innocence Coconut Water, which is nice. Yeah. Oh, and um, and Purdy's natural energy replenish raspberry. I do like Purdy's, but I'm unconvinced by its health qualities. Right. Um, proof you can die of a broken heart. It's called Takotsubo and can be sparked by bereavement, stress, and even joy. Now doctors are finding new ways to treat it. I thought we knew that for a long time. Uh, what really causes middle age spread and how you can beat it? Oh, geez, every day with this shit. Um, night sweats aren't just caused by menopause. They may be a cancer warning sign. Ah, good. Daily Mail scare stories. Love them. Um, trying to sell you hearing aids. Things to stop back pain. Uh, in the TV review, Saving Lives at Sea, 8 p.m. BBC Two. Uh, looks quite good. Uh, film choices, Bells of Tr St. Trinians, uh, which is on in 30 minutes on BBC Two. First of a 
trio of comedies, Blue Murder and Pure Hell, follow on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, and they feature Alistair Sim playing the headmistress, Miss Fritton. I remember enjoying those as a kid. Uh, and also tonight at 11pm, uh, the uh, quality Jason Statham flick, The Mechanic. Uh, where he plays an experienced assassin who takes the son of a murdered colleague under his wing to teach him the tricks of his trade and exact revenge on the men who set up a hit. It's a remake of the 1972 Charles Bronson Michael Winner original and is better than the Winner film. Um, right, in the, in the cartoons today, Garfield is on a Zoom call uh, with a mouse. Um, Chloe and Co are sat down drinking and talking about men and in Fred Bassett, Fred Bassett is just um, still at the holiday park having a fun time and uh, living his best life. They're trying to sell you disgusting looking meals. Uh, Chef's Table by Parsley, Parsley Box. If your family makes you have to have those, they probably don't like you. Let's do today's poem. Today's poem comes from Norman Warnstall of Worcestershire and, it's, and, he, and it goes like this. A result of months of COVID is that people feel so stressed that oldies like my wife and I can easily get depressed. We therefore both decided that we had to find a way of changing something in our lives to brighten up our day. We knew we couldn't travel far or dine in the local bar. Oh God, the scansion. But suddenly we had a thought of buying a nicer car. We knew we'd get a thrill from that as we had our car a while. It was only time to buy a modern one with a totally different style. I called a friend who works with cars. I love the type he drives. I soon And soon he turned up at our door with a car that changed our lives. The color wasn't quite our choice and nor was the maker's name. Plus we have to change to diesel fuel, but we loved it just the same. The car has changed the way we drive, which sounds a bit dramatic, but finally we share the joy of a car that's automatic. Norman, just send it, send that to your family, mate. Uh, and the limerick of the day comes from Robert Ben Nathan in Denim Box. And it goes, The lockdown has been such a slog. Thank heavens we're out of the fog. It's been quite a test. But who's come out best? No doubt it's the faithful pet dog. What? That doesn't even... How does that even... That doesn't scan. Lockdown has been such a slog. Thank heavens we're out of the fog. It, it, it's been quite a test. But who's come out best? No doubt it's the faithful pet dog. That, does, that limerick doesn't work. That's not... I can't... I, anyway, right. Finally, I do... I, this makes me hate the written word. And finally, straight to the point letters. Uh, Clive Witchelow of uh, SW19 says, Don't give the pensioners a rise. I'll only fritter it away on food and heating. Dave Burkett Evans of Rosset Wrexham says, Many of my friends are country boys. I can assure General Nick Carter they have nothing remotely in common with the Taliban. Christine Walpole writes, Harry and Meghan are entering an era of visibility. Have they been to spec savers? Roger Pipe, real name, Roger Pipe. And I'll say that one more time, Roger Pipe. Roger Pipe says, After complaints about the all-male Garrett Club, I'm applying to join the Women's Institute. God forbid I'm accepted. Uh, Cherry Wild, real name, says, Who's in contention to replace Hugh Edwards on News at 10? Four women! When is politically correct box ticking going to stop? God forbid we have women on the telly, Cherry. God forbid. Um, Mike Prentice, uh, sadly of Nottingham, letting down SK's side terribly here, says, If broadcasters can add SH to words beginning with S, why can't they put a G at the end of ing? Right. All right. Okay, whatever. Uh, Michael Smith, bringing disgrace to the name shared by both me and Canine Behaviourist, says, Bournemouth has removed its deck chairs. One thing's for sure, they'll have trouble putting them back up again. And TM Britain, trademark Britain, says, Relief at last! With my ears festooned in glasses, hearing aids and a mask, I've nowhere to put my pencil. As ever, just send these to the family WhatsApp group, lads. Uh, today's uh, recipe is fondant potatoes. They look honestly disgusting. They, I mean, really. Uh, they're trying to push raw food for, for cats. Uh, canine behaviorists will tell you that raw food for dogs is bad, and I'm pretty sure it's bad for cats as well. They're still trying to flog those magnetic bracelets that apparently, you know, fix uh, fix all manner of health 
problems. Uh, still trying to flog cruises, a cruise, uh, yeah, no, 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 says canine behaviorist about raw food. Yeah, raw food is a bad thing. Uh, some very ugly chinos, just 65 pounds for these extremely ugly chinos. Um, and in the sport, Iron Mighty, West Ham go top after Fox's route, 4-0, uh, West Ham 1, Leicester City, sorry, West Ham 4, Leicester City 1. Uh, Arsenal stand by Arteta, for how long, I'm not sure, and we're winning, Spurs confident they will keep Kane, I doubt this. Cats are obligate carnivores and need to be fed appropriately, says Industrial Pair. Uh, Red Tick sees, uh, says I'm assuming their family reads the family WhatsApp. No, no, I'm not. I mean, I'm just sending the messages in there. It doesn't matter if the family reads it. It just means we don't have to either. Right, so that was the Daily Mail. I mean, it's a classic negative nice, isn't it? Um, yeah. So there you go. That is, um, that's the Daily Mail. Enjoy. Enjoy. Uh, at your own risk. Uh, it's a negative nice from C122H122. Um... And, uh, yeah, so, uh, do consider uh, chucking some coins into the paper fund if you've enjoyed the show. That's uh, paypal.me forward slash conquest of the useless. And if you are not a subscriber of the newsletter, give that a go as well. You can subscribe for free, brokenbottleboy.substack.com. And if you like it, upgrade to a paid subscription and it helps support me continuing to write uh, as many editions as I do. Uh, this has been The Paper Thing with me, The Broken Bottle Boy. You can follow me on Twitter at Broken Bottle Boy. And um, if you're not a member of the Discord, the Discord is also worth joining. It's a place where we can talk about stuff when the show isn't on. Um, and here's the link for that. I should set an automated link up in the bot. I will do that. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube uh, after the fact, uh, please uh, like uh, like, subscribe, and all that other stuff. Uh, thank you for, for doing that. And for the live viewers, thank you very much for tuning in, particularly uh, uh, parents in the chat, uh, canine behaviorist and uh, first in the queue. And, of course, person in the room, uh, the cake-stealing person in the room. No, cake Devlin. No coin. Cake and, and, yes, and cake Devlin. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you'll be back to visit, Mum. Uh, it's good. You can actually just visit my house normally as well. Um... Thank you, Zoe. Uh, C122, H122 still wants cake. I will be back tomorrow at 1pm for another edition of the show. More papers. And on Friday, we will have a magazine special. And if you want to um, decide what the magazine is, just uh, throw the price of the magazine into the newspaper fund. And, and I'll get it and do it. Thanks, Gad Station. Uh, I'll be tuning into your stream uh, later or whenever you're next on. And uh, cheers, everyone. Have a good one. Bye-bye.